Earlier this week, President Donald Trump announced that his administration is connecting the rising rate of autism in the United States to taking Tylenol during pregnancy. Yeah, so we wanted to look closer into what the science says about that connection and why some people are more open to this idea than others. ABC 6 News reporter Chandler Jackson joins us now live to tell us more about what he's found. Chandler, what have you learned? Well, Robin, Maisie, I learned a couple of things. One, this is a conversation with a lot of facts and science, but it's also one with a human element that makes it all more complicated and more personal. When it comes to the science, there are two aspects of the president's announcement this week worth addressing. The first is the supposed connection between Tylenol use during pregnancy and the risk of a child developing autism. On this front, many experts are very clear. For the studies that are actually controlling for genetics and familial confounding, the, those studies are not supporting that a causal association exists between acetaminophen infant use and autism. Even the one most recent research review that could support the president's claims, some experts find dubious at best. They, they more emphasize the studies that they believe to be high quality and they sort of uh, disregard the studies they believe to be lower quality. The, the study, in my opinion, is a, a fairly selected, uh, selective, uh, cherry-picked um, analysis of the evidence to date. The other aspect is the suggestion that leucovorin, a common chemotherapy treatment, could also be used to treat certain symptoms of autism. Scientists like Dr. Lee say it's possible the drug could be helpful, but there's too little research to say for certain yet. Research aside, for some, opening another avenue of possible answers is more than they could hope for. Michelle Ensign is the founder of the local Autism Resource Guide and mother to 11-year-old Declan. Declan is diagnosed with the most severe form of autism. He's nonverbal and in the past has been prone to hurting himself. It is our life. It's far more his than mine, but because it's his, it is mine. And every aspect of our life revolves around autism. As a result, Michelle split her time between raising Declan and learning as much as possible about his condition and what options there are to help him. And she's more open to any solution that could make her son's life easier. It's so significant and we need so much help that he cannot function on his own. If it can help, you're going to take that and you're going to be grateful and you're going to pray and you're going to pray for every single chance that you can find that's going to give you that chance and that hope to improve your son or your daughter's life. Over the last couple of decades, the rate of autism has been on the rise from one in 150 back in 2000 to one in 31 as of 2022. And though according to science, the reason for that is most likely better diagnostic tools and more awareness, the possibility of genetic or environmental factors also hasn't been ruled out.